Good morning. I'm Sherry Goodfellow. Welcome to Vail Church. 
We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the heroes of the Bible, some like Abraham and Sarah and Esther and Mordecai are familiar, but there are others like our hero today who are less familiar to us. Today, our hero's spotlight is on Barnabas, whose name was really Joseph. Barnabas was his nickname and it meant encourager. Scripture tells us that Barnabas was filled with joy, was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and was a powerful evangelist. Scripture also tells us that Barnabas sold his property and gave 100% to the apostles. Barnabas played a pivotal role in spreading the gospel and joining Saul, who will later become known by his Hebrew name, Paul, on mission trips. As we learn the story of Barnabas, we see that without the encouragement and mentoring of Barnabas, it is likely that Paul wouldn't have been the biblical hero we've come to know. Please join in the call to worship. In the morning, O Lord, you hear our prayers. In the light of this day, we praise your name. Through the abundance of your steadfast love, you have gathered us into your house. In the holiness of your presence, we bow down to worship and adore you. Let's go. 
The God of the oppressed hunts evil as a lioness stalks prey, so that sin cannot hide in high or low places. But the Holy One also forgives all who repent. Let us confess our sins. God of justice and mercy, we confess that we disobey your will. We show neither justice nor mercy to others. Christ our Savior, love incarnate we confess that we take your love for granted. We do not give of ourselves, nor do we rejoice in all the blessings we receive. Holy Spirit, power and breath, we confess that we block your movement. We do not live holy lives of sacrificial love. Gracious Trinity, forgive us and grant us your peace. Help us to turn from our sins so that we may love you by joyfully caring for others. Amen. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. Jesus said to the one who had sinned much, your sins are forgiven. The cross of Christ stands as the sign that of love that God lives in us through faith in the grace of God. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I say to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Imagine the dangers that faced the disciples after the death of Jesus. Saul was one of the main persecutors of the disciples and a sworn enemy of Jesus. But on the way to Damascus, God spoke to him and he was converted. Saul began to preach passionately about Jesus and tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him. Barnabas befriended Saul brought him to the disciples and told them about Saul's preaching about Jesus in Damascus. So it was by Barnabas's backing and testimony that Saul was accepted by the disciples. As the story of Saul and Barnabas unfolds, 
we will see Barnabas quietly mentoring and encouraging Saul and the other believers to stay true to the Lord. Few Christians have contributed more to the advancement of the church than Barnabas. Here's part of his story from Acts chapter 9, verses 26 through 28. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They didn't believe he was really a disciple. Then Barnabas brought Saul to the apostles and told them the story about how Saul saw the Lord on the way and that the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them about the confidence with which Saul had preached in the name of Jesus in Damascus. After this, Saul moved freely among the disciples in Jerusalem and was speaking with confidence in the name of the Lord. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been encouraged in life? I, I certainly hope so. But what difference did it make? What difference has encouragement made to you? Last week, we, we heard Drew Entz uh, talk about the importance of encouragement for him, for that, that friendship, that relationship that was so important. Let's see about Barnabas and how his encouragement made a difference not only in the lives of Paul, but eventually in two hours. Will you pray with me? Now, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We are, well, Barnabas is, is one of those characters. You, you see, you might, you might remember the name. You might remember a little bit, pieces of his story. But one of the things I'm trying to do this summer is to teach these characters out. We don't hear a lot about them. And yet, they often had an important role, even if it was seemed like a small one. And here is Barnabas. We, we first learn about him in Acts chapter 4, but his name is actually Joseph. Barnabas is simply a nickname. It means one who encourages or son of encouragement. Boy, wouldn't that be a great nickname? Oh, hey, encouragement, come on over here. Wouldn't, wouldn't you love to have that nickname? But he was a Levite from Cyprus. Levites were in charge of, well, were, were, were given the task of maintaining the, the sanctuary, the, the order of the church, of the, of the worship clearly Jewish. And in Acts chapter 4, he has this piece of property that he sells and he donates all the money to the, uh, to the church that these Christians might get things going. More to that story, but, but that's not terribly important to us right here. The, the, the next person in our story is, is Saul, and, and you know this story. He was a Pharisee. And, and he, in his own words, he was very zealous for God. You see, Paul, Paul's gift is to see you know, the, the, the deep understanding of, of, of what our teaching is, what our understanding of Christ is, and that he was a very theological mind. And he heard about these Christians, and he said, well, that's not right. That was, that was not just different than his belief, but to him it was heretical. It was completely wrong. And he persecuted this group called Christians. He had, he had letters of authority to, to arrest and, and, and to take care of these heretics until God struck him off his high horse. Okay. I don't know that he was actually on a horse, so maybe it was figurative. Text doesn't tell us either way, but, 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 but definitely Saul got knocked down. And he begins to understand that these Christians are right, that his understanding is flawed and heretical. He is led to a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. Now, Ananias gets this word. He's like, oh, God, I have heard about this guy. He's dangerous. 
I'm not going anywhere near him. But God says, oh no, you don't have a choice here. You must. And Ananias takes care of Saul. And while he's in Damascus, Saul confers with the disciples there. And he begins to to preach and proclaim this Jesus that doesn't go well with the other religious leaders. Many had been his colleagues, you know, and, 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 and perhaps even his friends. And they probably saw his teaching as as, as treason. Well, not literal treason, but, but, but being a traitor to their understanding clearly heretical. And they plot to get rid of him, and the only reason he escapes Damascus is because the other disciples help him escape. They lower a basket. They have a window in the wall. They put him in a basket and lower rain down so he can get away. So where does he go from there? He goes to Jerusalem, which is, is the center of not just Judaism, but also this Christianity. This is where the apostles are. Many of them, maybe not all of them. This is the the hub. But when he goes, the disciples are kind of like Ananias. We've heard about this guy. I'm not sure we should be talking to him. He may have some trick up his sleeve. And this is where Barnabas comes in. See, Barnabas thinks there's something real here. And so he reaches out to Paul. And he brings him in. He begins to confer with the disciples. And and, 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 and because Barnabas saw God in Paul, it changed Christianity. It changed the world. And not just in this one incident, because he he and and, and Paul can, can begin to travel together. And Barnabas is a good preacher in his own right. They travel the Mediterranean basin, that, that whole area, well, the northern part of it, the Roman Empire, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Starting churches, encouraging churches, teaching, preaching. They bring along with them John Mark. We'll talk about John Mark next week. But he was an important part of this as well. But if Barnabas had not reached out to Paul, our life would be less for it. Paul is is credited with writing about half the books of the New Testament or maybe a third of the the pages. He may not have written all of those, but, but certainly he inspired and people who wrote them wrote them in his name to honor him. Yeah. Paul's encounter with God was important and and, and critical, but it took Barnabas to complete it. After all, you know, the old saying, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's here, it doesn't make a sound. If, 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 If Paul had seen the light but yet not been able to proclaim, would it matter? Well, certainly to Paul it would have, but maybe not to us. And Barnabas... Son of encouragement. Made it happen. We all need encouragement. Encouragement makes a difference. Among people who 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 run, they they they, they often talk about the, the Bislet effect. That's named after this the stadium in Oslo, where the most records are set. One Sports pundit said, if you can't run well at Bislett, you can't run well anywhere. Why is that? It's it's not the climate. That may be a factor, but it's not a a big part of it. No, the big part is that there are only six lanes on this track. And it's it's a narrow track. The grandstands are steep, and the crowd seems very, very close. When, 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 Runner puts it this way, the sound of 21,000 screaming maniacs rakes your reflexes, forcing you to keep your rhythm, the crowd's rhythm. For one more stretch, one more turn, the frenzied fans keep you going. Their excitement encourages runners. 
I, 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 I'm, I don't run anymore, but uh, I ran the Boston, you know, Boston, the Richmond Half Marathon twice. And I've had some other races too, but I always loved the Richmond one because the crowd was so encouraging, holding up signs saying, say, you know, my favorite, uh, run like you stole something, you know. Encourage, go, go, you can do it. I didn't know who those people were. They didn't know who I was. They didn't care. Their encouragement was infectious. It keeps us going. This past week, I've been with our, our team in Guatemala. What an encouragement I think we've been. When I first went in, I guess it was 2015, we, the, the school, the, the we, the church had started building the school. There were four classrooms. But they were still cooking in the old school. And it was basically a log cabin. I mean, the best descriptor. That's where they cooked. It was hot and it was stuffy. And it was hard to breathe. And when it rained, sometimes the rain came through the roof, but, but, but more so the water came underneath the floor. And that was, that was not just the kitchen, that was also the classroom for the longest time. Because of the work of the church, of you, they now have these classrooms with, with, with solid roofs and, and windows and ventilation and hard floors that don't flood. There's a computer lab with, 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 with solar power there's a real kitchen now, a security fence, and now a playground. Now, we at Vail haven't done all of that. We've done a lot of it. But our encouragement has been infectious, and other people have jumped in and helped out. And one thing I've learned is that they don't really need our physical help. They're very capable of doing a lot of this work themselves. What we bring are, are the money, the resources, but also the encouragement. You are important. You can do something here. You can make a difference. And they do. Who around you needs encouragement? Who do you need to, to, to reach out to and say, come, join us? You are important. Drew talked about this last week. I, 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 I hear people hear church say, oh, you know, so-and-so hasn't been in church for a while. Pastor, you should go visit them. And I do. But you need to as well. Because for many people, they see it as, as my job. You know, that's what I, you know, oh, well, Jeff's just doing that because, because he's the preacher. That's what he's supposed to do. That's true. But like I said, I, 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 I do reach out. But when it comes from you, it is so much better. Because you're part of the family. Several years ago, when, when we were t talking about the, 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 the sanctuary, it, it needed a freshening up. The red carpet was pink in many places, worn. It was hard to get in and out. Maybe, maybe you remember that. You know, yeah, you could go in through the front doors if you could come up the steps, but you couldn't get at it from the building very easily. If you were in a wheelchair, it was tough. Getting a casket in and out of the building could be tough. So we decided to, to, to make some changes you know, to, to move the door to the, to the resource room and make it wider so people could get through and, and the floor was now flat. But a big expense was a ramp outside. And again, because if we made that, that doorway flat and we had the elevator, we didn't have to do it. But the ramp outside was such, made so much easier. But it wasn't cheap, and there was some discussion in the council about it. And one person, you know, said, "Well, okay, how many people are going to use this?" And and we could name one person, pretty pretty, that we thought would be um, that would be helpful too. And then they would say, "Well, you know, why are we doing this for one person? What does it matter?" And Susan Lay, oh my God, bless bless you, Susan. 
Susan is always forthright. You may, you may disagree with her, but she's going to tell you what she thinks. And she looked at this person straight in the eye and said, it matters if you're the one. It matters if you're the one because they have reached out to you. You are important. We've done this so you can come and worship with us. We have, we have three different worship services here at Dale on Sunday morning. We have the virtual service, which is an option for many, you know, for, for those who have, are no longer in the area, or maybe they're just traveling now the area for the, for, the, for the morning. They can participate. Or for those who, who, who are unable to, 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 to come to worship for, for uh, lots of reasons. Virtual service is an option. We have our traditional service in the sanctuary for, for those who, who like that. And then in our fellowship hall, a third service. Not in the sanctuary, but, but in a place that's, that's, that's less formal but more relaxed, more conducive, I think, to people with children whom we want to encourage and invite and make welcome. Encouragement is important. And it's not always just cheering on the sidelines. That's helpful. Oftentimes it's reaching out and saying, you're important, come join us. Or maybe it's people we don't even know. But by making a place hospitable and open and welcoming. Because they are important. My friends, who do you need to encourage this week? I'm not suggesting that that person will, 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 will become the next Paul. But they might. But the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is powerful. And it can change lives. And if we reach out and share it, that can make all the difference in the world. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Speak to us, O God, for we, your servants, are listening. Amen. As Barnabas believed Paul and encouraged him in ministry, we worship a God who loves and encourages us. This means...
we can bring to God our joys and our concerns. And we know that God hears our prayer. I invite you to enter your prayers into the chat that we may lift them up as your sisters and brothers in Christ. I will in each petition in our prayer with renew us, O God, your response is, your mercy is great. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love what you create. We pray this day for the earth, that its air, soil, and water may be refreshed and restored to good health. We pray for all of your creatures, that as the community of life, we may share fairly the harvest of land and sea. Renew us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all nations and people. Let us share the riches of our cultures without hatred or fear or suspicion. We pray for all who govern, especially for President Biden, Vice President Harris, Governor Yunkin, and all entrusted to care for all people. Grant a spirit of wisdom, compassion, and courage to those in authority whom you charge with the task of leading and safeguarding others in your justice. Renew us, O God, for your mercy is great. We pray for the poor and the sick, the weak and the vulnerable. Be their protector, healer, and vindicator, easing the sufferings of body, mind, and spirit. We especially lift up the prayers that are on our hearts this morning. Renew us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the church, for Bishop Lewis, District Superintendent Sarah Calvert, our clergy and laity throughout the church. Strengthen the body of Christ with the Holy Spirit that we may have the mind of Christ among us. Equip your people to serve with love the world you sent your son to save. May our ministry take the form of his cross as we proclaim his resurrection and look forward to his coming in glory. Renew us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And we come together and pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We are thankful for the many wonderful works of Vail, for the missions and ministry, for our ability to go down to Guatemala, for your support and your care. We couldn't do it without this church and your offerings and your support. Let us give God thanks. We thank you, Lord, for the power given through Christ to forgive others as we have been forgiven. And we present our tithes and our offerings in joyful thanksgiving for all the blessings we have received from you. Use them and us as instruments of your peace, serving the call of the church until Christ comes in final victory. Amen. Like Barnabas, let us encourage our sisters, our brothers, our family in Christ. Let us walk beside them and support in them in their faith walk with Jesus. You are made in the image of God, saved by the Son of God, given life and faith by the Spirit of God. The triune God loves you and will forever. Go forth in God's peace. Amen.